the beer. Yeah. I love it. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Hey everyone, so uh, I'm excited for you to get to watch this video. Um, this is uh, going to be a special vlog. Um, it's something that I'm going to start doing yearly, um, especially if you guys seem to like this. But this is actually going to be covering uh, first the Moeller High School show, um, which is a local card show that always has some uh, pretty decent signings. Um, so if I go, I'll definitely record that. Um, I went this year, uh, so this is well past when all of these events happen. Um, this is actually after Christmas now, because um, I've waited way too long on this video, and I apologize for the delay. Um, but uh, I wanted to tell you um, a couple things. So first of all, the beginning of the video is going to be at the Moeller High School show, and i um, then the second part of the video is going to go into Red's Fest. Um, day one, Rachel and Matthew and Andrew came with me. Um, it, it went good. We had a great time until we didn't. Uh, so um, you'll see a little bit of this, but uh, Andrew ended up getting kind of upset a couple different times. So Rachel had to go on her own because standing in line with... Uh, the baby wasn't exactly wor uh, working. And then uh, Matthew had a great time up until he got home. And then he got super, super sick. So um, actually the second day, uh, my nephew Luke came with me. And um, so we got to enjoy that together. Now, um, today is December 26th. And I would be completely remiss if I didn't mention this to you. My heart hurts to say this, but we've lost one of my favorite people, one of my favorite players of all time, Tom Browning. Um, Tom Browning was a wonderful, wonderful human being. I've gotten to meet him quite a few times. Um, I have enjoyed having conversations with him. Um, he actually, a little bit of uh, you know information, he was the very first Cincinnati Reds player that I remember meeting. Um, and he's actually the very first player that Matthew ever met as well. Um, so I am deeply cut to my core. Um, he was one of my favorite people to collect. Um, in fact, here in just a second, I'm going to display some of my collection of him. Um, just to show you guys uh, really quick. And... Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm very, very hurt by it. Um, no cause of death or anything has come out as far as I know. Um, but they didn't suspect any kind of foul play. He was only 62 years old. Um, one of only 16 pitchers to ever throw a perfect game, or one of 16 perfect games, I should uh, I should say, in the MLB ever. Um I mean, Tom Browning was a special human being in general. So, God bless his family. Um, you know, I pray that they they find peace during this time. Um, that God is with them, and that things, you know, you know, they can grieve and move past as best they can. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna show a couple items in my collection, just to kind of honoring him here in a minute and then uh you can get straight into the video so if you want to skip past this part it'll probably only be a little bit but um feel free and uh yeah let's get into it so let's talk about all of these real quick and then uh we'll quickly move on to the rest of the video um so first i actually want to mention this so this was the first ever item, along with one other item sitting on the table, that I ever got signed, weirdly enough, by Tom Browning. Um, so I actually met Brandon Phillips, Jeff Keppinger, and Tom Browning all at the same time. Um, Brandon Phillips, of course, signed the jersey right on the number, Jeff Keppinger over here, and Tom Browning right there. In that same signing, <clears throat> I met him for the very first time. I got this ball. A Reds Rally Pack Ball. 
signed by Tom Browning, Brandon Phillips, and Jeff Kepinger. Uh, surprisingly, this is actually kept in decent condition, though for the first like five years of me having it, I definitely didn't take care of it. It's not an actual MLB baseball, and it stayed good. Surprising. Um, <clears throat> so I have a couple different things here I want to mention. Uh, I have a, I want to say this is a 5x7, um, Tom Browning signed picture. Uh, he dated it the perfect game date, which is uh, September 16th, 1988. So really love that picture. Um, next up, we have another picture here. Rooftop Tommy. It's a caricature of the day that he went uh, in Chicago. And he went up to the top of one of the, uh, the, pl the buildings in uh, the outfield, or right past the outfield. And he sat on the edge. And we have another item that actually kind of displays this. But he signed this picture, kind of laughed about it and everything. And... Um, it was just incredible, and he signed the date of it and wrote Rooftop Tommy. So, and you know, the thing is, another thing testifying to the nature of Tom Browning, I did not ask him to put any of that stuff. He did it all on his own. I mean, Tom Browning was a one-of-one -one human being. Uh, next up, actually a very sad item for me now. Um, this is a scorecard made up of his perfect game. And this was going to be the very next item I got him to sign. And I am tremendously sad that I will never get that opportunity now. So, yeah, um, that hurts to honestly look at. Uh, following along that path, this is another item that I feel the same way about. Uh, Browning's on York. This was from his uh, kind of short-lived bar that he owned. Um, and I... I got this off of another person. I never actually went to the bar. Um, but I wanted to get him to sign this in gold paint pen. And, yeah, unfortunately, I'll never get that opportunity. Um, next up, I want to talk about my bobblehead collection of him because I have almost every bobblehead ever made of him signed by him. So um, I may be missing one maximum, I think. But uh, first we have the Rooftop Tommy one. Um, and you can see he signed it, Tom Browning. Oh, well, my camera decides to focus. There we go. Tom Browning and Rooftop Tommy, 7793. Same inscription as that. Really nice looking bobblehead. I really like that one. That was one of the later ones that they made. And uh, I got signed not all that long ago. Um, then from the Reds Hall of Fame, Tom Browning. Uh, 2015 Reds Hall of Fame series. This is from the sweep series that they did for the 1990 World Series. And you can see he wrote Tom Browning, Mr. Perfect. And yeah, really like this one. I like the stance and everything. Now, I believe one of the original ones of him here, uh, the Perfect Game Celebration, um, where... You can see him doing kind of the same thing he did at the end of the perfect game, the fist pump and everything, and he signed it, Tom Browning, Mr. Perfect. So, really like that one. Um, unfortunately, mine, the Chiquito banana thing is kind of leaning to the side there. So, um, And then finally, a minor league one. Um, well, actually, it's not minor league. It's Florence Freedom, which is the... Uh, the Frontier League, but uh, they did a bobblehead for him saying Tom Browning, Mr. Perfect, with a man of freedom uniform, and signed by him on the top. Uh, all of these I got signed in person, and every single one of them I'll cherish the memory of getting to do that. Um, finally, the last two items, and I'm going to save the coolest story for last. So this is my 1990 World Series seat back. Um, I have all kinds of signatures on here. You'll actually see this later in the video um, because we actually added a new one with, uh, with um, why am I blanking on his name? It's late and I'm apparently blanking. Oh, Danny Jackson, right there. Um, so anyways, though, out of all of these, I got 
Uh, Todd Benzinger first. He is right up there. 1990 World Series champs at the very top. And then following that, I got Ron Oster, who wrote Wire to Wire. Because if you don't know, the Reds went wire to wire, meaning they never dropped out of first place from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. And then finally, I got this one. And I want to talk about this because as soon as I saw what this seat back number was and the fact that I wanted to do it for the 1990 World Series team, there was only one person that I had in mind for signing this section. And specifically because I'd had so many previous experiences with him and I knew how incredible of a human being he was, I knew he would do this for me. And so when I went to go ask Tom to sign it, I asked him, hey, I think it'd be really cool if since I'm doing 1990 World Series on this on this seat back, would you please sign it fifth world championship? And he was completely overwhelmed and excited that he was the one getting to sign this. And he thought the idea was so, so cool. So I'll always cherish that, that Tom Browning kind of got a kick out of signing this right here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm blessed that I got to meet all these people so far. There's quite a few still to meet on there. Um, a couple that I kind of want to redo the signature. Lou Pinella, if possible. Uh, Rob Dibble. Some of these are kind of fading a little more than I want them to. Um, but yeah, Tom Browning on there, that will always stand out special for me. So, And then finally, my favorite experience. One of my favorite experiences in my whole life. Tom Browning, I met at the Reds Hall of Fame a couple years back and actually had the opportunity to hit batting practice off of him in the batting cages that they had there. And uh, stupidly, I didn't do it on an actual uh, Rawlings official Major League Baseball, but I did it on this, and it's actually held the signature decently well. So I try and hide it. I try not to let it see too much light because then it can get damaged. But... Um, to tell you the story, I am a left-handed hitter primarily. I'm kind of a switch hitter, um, but definitely more lefty primary. And I had never hit off a lefty pitcher before. Never in my life. And um, I went to go hit off of him in the batting cages, and I really didn't know what to expect. And he wasn't throwing fast or anything, but my nerves and everything else got to me. And I actually was struggling to hit. Um, I was struggling to even swing the bat near the ball. And um, he kind of came to me and he actually gave me a pep talk. And uh, he said like, well, you know, tell me where you like it and I'll throw it there. And, um, you know, and I, I actually asked him beforehand. I said, would it be OK if specifically I give you this baseball and like in the mixture of all the baseballs that you're going to throw to me? I'll hit this one as well, and then I'll take it back, and then you can sign it for me. And he said, oh, yeah, that sounds really cool. I can definitely do that. Uh, something to that effect. Of course, that's paraphrasing. But he was super nice about it, and I really struggled to get any hits off of him. But what ended up happening is uh, he kind of found out I like pitches high and close to me. And um, so he threw a couple right up there, and then he told me, all right, this is the one. Here it comes. And sure enough, I hit it. It wouldn't have been that good of a hit basically down the first baseline if it hadn't been a batting practice, a batting cage. But I was super happy, um, super delighted. And so he signed the ball for me after that. Um, and, you know, even talking about this sto these stories – makes me kind of emotional and I know for some people they're gonna be like oh that sounds ridiculous but this guy I literally I I was such a fan of him um and he was so incredible such a nice human being such a great person to even just spend time with I mean just so much fun and to even hear his stories he was so humble too um for example, one famous story that he actually told me, like, he told this story a lot, but we actually had a conversation on it, was the perfect game ball that he had, he actually let his kids play with, and they lost it in the woods behind his house. So, like, 
he didn't look at those things and say, like, that's the priority, you know. Um, these are my treasures. I'm going to, you know, take care of these, blah, 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 blah. He didn't do that kind of thing. He focused more on, you know, experiences and time with fans and stuff. And so I'll definitely miss him. Um, so anyways, uh, he's actually in this video shortly. Um, in the Moeller High School show, um, that section of it, he's signing right next to Danny Jackson. Now, I really wish I could go back in time knowing what I know now and go into his line and get that scorecard signed and just get to say hi to him one last time. But unfortunately, I didn't. Um, at the time, I actually kind of thought he'd be at Reds Fest again, and so I held off. I did not get anything signed by him, and now I dumbly regret it, of course. But, you know, obviously nobody saw this coming. Um, so, you know, that's the last time I'll ever see him. This is probably the last known footage of him. I don't know how much more there is. Um, so if you happen to see him, he's wearing a white shirt and uh, sitting little bit down from Danny Jackson at the high school show there. So anyways, that will wrap up this section. Um, I'm sorry for this video being so late. Just a lot been going on with the Christmas season and work and stuff. So um, anyways, enjoy the video. I uh, pray you had a good Christmas and everything. And uh, probably won't be the last time you see me during the video. I may have some things to explain later on. Um, so anyways, enjoy. Hey everyone, good morning. Today is Saturday, November 26th. Um, I wanted to start a vlog here today because we got some special events coming up. Number one is the Moeller High School Cincinnati Card Show. Um, I'm coming this year because there are two guys that I want to meet for a special project I'm doing. And I got to hurry and make this intro because I got to jump in there. One of them's about to finish his signing, so I got to run in. But, um... I'll tell you a little bit about them first. The first one is Tom Carroll. Tom Carroll was part of the uh, 1975 team that won the World Series, though he actually wasn't in the World Series, um, but he was actually voted by his teammates to receive a portion of uh, all the, the winnings and everything, just like you, he was on the team at that time. So I am going to... I'm going to... Um, honor that, I guess you would say, and uh, have him put on my seat back... So this seat back is from Riverfront Stadium, and I have a pretty decent amount of guys from 1975 and 1976 on here, the Big Red Machine. Um, I'm not going to take the time right now to go through all the names because I don't have the time. And then the second guy that I'm going to meet is Danny Jackson, pitcher for the 1990 World Series Cincinnati Reds, um, and can't wait to get him on here. This is my seat back from Riverfront as well of the 1990 World Series champions. Um, I've collected all of these myself. So same with the other seat back. And my favorite part is I had Tom Browning write fifth world championship using the number there. So that's really cool. Anyways, so we're going to go inside and get these signed by each guy. Hey, Mr. Carroll. I'm doing good. There's my ticket. Thank you. It's very nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Black or white? Yes, please. Anywhere on there is fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It's an honor to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. There he is. Just got to meet him. That was pretty nice. Paid signings are always so quick, especially in those atmospheres. Like, you know, they, I don't know. It's, I love doing it, but at the same time, paid signings almost kind of leave you wanting a little more. So, um, now time for Danny Jackson. We're going to get him somewhere on here. So I'm going to probably shop around for a couple minutes first because they got a bunch of stands in there and stuff that i'm going to check out um reds fest is coming up so i want to see if there's anything i want to buy for reds fest in there so all right see you in a minute Rich, Boston, Chicago, 
different places. Hi, Mr. Jackson. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Great. Blue on this? Yes, please. Anywhere you'd like. It's an honor to finally meet you. Well, there. How's it going, Tom? Thank All you, right. sir. You have a blessed day. You're welcome. You too. Thank you. Uh, Riverfront. Getting ready for Reds Fest 22. Here we go. That's a big bet. Give him a hug. Oh, there we go. Oh, look, there's Rosie. Oh, look, Rosie. Say hi to Rosie. No. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you ready, buddy? What's up, guys? What's up, Rosie? Reds Fest 2022. Oh, I'm excited. Matthew, you excited? Matthew? Yeah. You are? Nice. Mr. Helms? Did you buy that here? No, no, actually I already had it. You know what? You want that one? You... Oh, you're fine. Here's the way we've been signing on it. Oh yeah? Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, absolutely. So nice of you to offer it to me. Oh, of course. <laughs> Give me your helmet, buddy. Say hi. <laughs> He's a little shy. Matthew. Yeah. Grab it back from him. Say thank you. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> so sweet. Can you chill? Buddy, we're going to be here for hours. He's going to go to sleep right there. So that was Tommy Helms we just got an autograph of. I got him on a bobblehead, which I already put away, and... Matthew got him on his helmet. Rachel got him on a card that actually a guy in line gave to us. So, oh boy, we're actually at Reds Fest. Here we go. Marty Brim. Oh boy. Hey, look, hon. Marty Brim. Right there. <laughs> You know, I, I think we're taking it for granted a little bit, but I'm so happy that he's even here because there's a reality that he could have not been here at Reds Fest with us and still been in the NICU. So, so happy about that. You are such a happy baby. You are such a happy baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You having fun, buddy? <laughs> Look, 
Shut up. <laughs> Just stop it. You silly. Can you show it? Okay. Well, it's upside down, but Danny Graves is up next. Oh, where did you get this? So I actually bought it off a guy who, weirdly enough, in the same purchase, gave me your high school yearbook. I have... What? Yeah, I have no idea who it was, but he must have went to high school or something. This isn't, no. Can I tell you this was authentic? I don't know. Where was that? Uh, on the back. On the nine. Any color? Uh, any color. You know. <laughs> Sounds great to me. Also, I want to thank you for putting your testimony out. Um, I'm a very big fan. Uh, I wanted to give you this too. I do an online ministry. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Wonder beer. Yep. I love it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hard for like 20 some years. First second he added from me, Ben. So <laughs> we know it's All right, yours. Say though. thank you, buddy. Going in David Bell's line. You excited, buddy? A lot of walking cramp. Pray he does okay. Lots and lots of walking. Here, Matthew. Get your helmet ready, okay? <laughs> Hold on. Not yet. To the guy over there, okay? That's David Bell. Alright, buddy, come on. Put your helmet up there. How you doing, Mr. Bell? Good, how are you doing? Doing good. Say hi, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Can you grab it, bud? I also got that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Thanks a lot. You too. So Daddy comes in from uh, taking every taking everything extra outside to the car for like the fourth time, and look what Mommy has done to your hair. She did my boy dirty. <laughs> Daddy. Who who is your favorite to meet so far? Eddie Daddy. Who? What he just said, Eddie Johnny? Is that what you said? Eddie Johnny. Buddy, we met Tommy Helms, Danny Graves, and David Bell. We didn't meet Eddie Johnny. <laughs> You're so silly. Hey, let me see the back of your shirt. Yeah, repping the go. And you're playing Mario Kart. <laughs> Matthew. Who do we get to meet? Odie Vado. Yep, Joey Vado. Turn around. Show your shirt. Okay. We're at the very back of his line. I know, I can go. It is like an ocean of people up there. You excited, Matthew? We're only a couple feet from him. <laughs> All right, come on, Matthew. Hey, Mr. Vado. Very nice to meet you. Uh, my son wanted me to give you this for our YouTube channel. This business card. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Tell him thank you. All right, come on, Maddie. Yeah, he signed it right there. Look how cool that is. Hey, everyone. John from the future again. I just wanted to give a quick update on where we are here in the video. Um, so first of all, regarding the Votto signing, it's crazy, first of all, watching back that I was just talking to uh, Matthew about the back of his shirt saying Joey Votto. And then all of a sudden getting to meet Joey Votto. Um, what actually happened there was they announced the signing and it was in the kids only line. 
Well, there were not only kids in that line, first of all, but oh my goodness, the swarm of people. In fact, me and Matthew did not try, like, too hard to get into that line. What actually happened is there was such a mass of people, and they were all crowding us, that I picked up Matthew, scared that he was going to get, like, trampled or something. And then there were, like, four people behind us that just kept continuously pushing and pushing and pushing and the funny thing is we got in at the end of the line and the people behind us that were pushing us didn't make it they didn't get into the line um so thank you i suppose um but yeah so we got to meet joey Votto. he was really nice doing like secret handshakes with kids like making up secret handshakes he was taking Polaroid pictures with some people and stuff like that. Oh, he was really nice. Um, our part was kind of quick. But in that, <laughs> maybe you'll see this because uh, I was talking to Matthew when we were in line and we were talking about how I was making a video for uh, Red's Fest. And he goes, do you think Joey Votto will be in it? And I said, yes, yeah, since we're gonna getting to see him, um, you know, getting to meet him, I'm going to put him in the video. And he said... Can we give him a card? Because he knew I had the little business cards. And I said, I yeah, I mean, I guess we can. <laughs> so um, I already kind of thought about it, but I was like, ah, it's Joey Votto, you know? That's kind of nerve-wracking. But then when your son tells you, like, hey, let's do this, you kind of got to do it. So anyways, we did that. But then um, very shortly after, I stopped by... Um, the hallway where Rachel was because the baby had been kind of upset and then I went over to try and get uh, Chris Heisey's autograph and me and Matthew went but so to let you guys in a little bit I do have some anxiety um, and I haven't had many in my life but I do have panic attacks uh, very very rare occasions but I began having a panic attack in his line and um you can't really tell it uh, because I really masked it as best I could, but I felt like I couldn't breathe. Um, I felt like almost like the room was spinning. I started like sweating, even though it had been previously kind of chilly, not like super cold, but it, it was fine temperature before, but I started sweating and like, I felt just sick. I felt nauseous. Like I felt horrible. And the crazy thing is, I don't know if it was because of the excitement or not, but I ended up having one the next day at Red's Fest again in almost the exact same area. I started feeling really horrible again. Um, that one, I don't know if you can attribute as much to a panic attack, but this one was definitely a panic attack. So actually the part that you don't see um, is right after this, before the next signing, I took a small break and um, had to take a minute just to like, ground myself um which is a technique of talking about where you are and kind of bringing yourself down and um I, I had to take some time to like pray and you know sit off to the side by myself um i find that prayer especially whenever like i don't know i'm going through any kind of distress or sickness can really help a lot so i take a moment to be with god um you know and so i had to do that here and uh it it definitely helped but um, the systems, per the si uh, symptoms persisted for a little bit longer. Um, but eventually, by the end of the day, kind of cleared up. So, um, anyways, uh, I'll let you continue on in the video. Um, you know, yeah, it, it was really nice uh, at this point so far, um, up until the panic attack, and then even from there, we still had a good time. So, uh, keep watching, and I'll see you later. Hey. Having fun. Who are we in line for now? Did you um, say Chris Heisey? Chris Heisey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can you show the camera your helmet? Wow, that's so cool. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, Matthew, your turn. <laughs> What's your name? Matthew. Matthew, hi, buddy. Can I sign the helmet? All right. <laughs> Say thank you. There you go, buddy. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. 
All right. Yeah. Yeah. Not too many people have eyes jerseys, so that's pretty cool. I made sure to hold on to mine. All right, man. Hey, have a good night. <laughs> you too. God bless you. So actually, the funny thing about the next signing you're going to see, uh, it's actually, it's going to be Chris Welsh, Reds announcer and ex-Reds pitcher, and ex-Reds pitcher Tom Yoon. They were signing at the same time in the same area. And uh, the funny thing is, when um, the signing was about to take place, Tom Yoon was missing. And he was super, super late to the signing. So, um, and actually you could hear the re the Reds, like Reds Fest staff going like, well, where is he? And they were calling over the radio trying to find him. And Chris Welsh was like kind of not getting annoyed. He was joking about it to the crowd. Um, and it was so funny because then he was talking and he was like, well, when Tom gets here, make sure we let him know, like, he was quite late so he decided like hey let's do this grand entrance for him like i'll stand up and he said wait till he actually starts to get on stage and i'll introduce him and then everybody cheer for him and uh so he he does what you see next and man it was just it was hilarious um both of them were really incredibly nice as you'll see here in the video and uh it was it was a lot of fun so check that out <laughs> yeah, you got to do the princess wave. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> there you go, Mr. You. Oh, that's a so I actually bought it from a store that's here, uh, representing here. It's a uh, sports gallery. It's up in Fairfield. They had it, and I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea. Yes. Do you think that'll look good, or do you think I should do black? Or silver right now. Probably black. Let's try that. Whatever works. You're more of an expert on autographs than I am, probably, uh, so. <laughs> just whatever the people want. Some players have bats, some have fungos. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. They even had the red stuff on there. Yes, and it is extremely sticky and stuck to my hands all the time. There you go, sir. How you doing, Mr. Welsh? I'm doing great. Yourself? Doing well. Thank you so much. I got to tell you, you're one of the voices of my childhood, so I appreciate you. Well, you're still a child in my eyes. <laughs> I have four children in my eyes. So really quickly, let me also explain what you're about to see here. Um, so me and uh, Matthew went back out to the hallway, and we were kind of just standing around with Rachel when all of a sudden Lucas Sims started walking by. Now, I'm not one of those people that genuinely chases after autographs or anything like that. I used to be, not going to lie about who I used to be, but I'm not really into that anymore. Um, I, I, I'm 26 years old. I'm not chasing after another man's signature that hard. But um, anyways, uh, so I, I happened to see him and I thought like, well, you know, I do have a game used jersey of him that I'd like to get signed. So I calmly didn't run nothing like that walked over and Matthew followed me with his helmet and uh we went up to Lucas Sims and he was being so awesome like Lucas Sims is now one of my favorite people too um he was just signing for everybody like anybody that walked up he was signing multiple items for him and everything so nice like dude he was incredible and um 
I didn't have my camera on. I, I didn't. Um, and I walked up and I just said, hey, I hate to bother you, but do you mind signing my jersey for uh, for uh, for me? Like, it, I, I don't want to take any of your time. And um, he said, oh, how could I not sign a Lucas Sims jersey? And I, that's how incredible he was. He was so nice that he actually said, like, how could I not sign a Lucas Sims jersey? So um, he actually held it up to my back, signed it. And then uh, he turned, and Matthew was right there, and Matthew was kind of holding his helmet up. And so he said, oh, I'll sign this too, and like signed it real quick for him. But then the part that you'll hear us reference is Matthew actually like turns around and starts walking the wrong direction. And I'm standing still over to the other side. He apparently doesn't see me. And then this whole crowd, like all these people, start walking towards Lucas Sims. I'd say maybe only like 10, 15 people. It wasn't in th anything insane, but they must have just noticed he was right there. And so what happened was there ended up being this separation between me and Matthew where like I couldn't see. Well, I could still see him, but he couldn't see me at all. And he started to panic and he actually started crying. And so um, I very quickly ran over and like grabbed him and like pulled him in. And everything but that's what you see right here he had actually just got done crying a ton thinking I'd actually left him and I did not leave him at all but uh, I think that's part of why he ended up getting so sick later on is he got so upset at this moment um, so yeah and then finally we close out the video with the last signing of the day um, I don't remember if I got anybody else on the way out I kind of don't think so I think that's mainly the next day um, I got a couple people's autographs later on, but, um, yeah, so, uh, that will end day one and then I'll have day two started as well. Hey, who did we just meet? His name was Lucas Sims. Lucas Sims was incredibly nice. He signed your helmet. I'll show that. And he signed my Jersey, which Rachel has right now, but he was so, so nice. Wasn't he? But you got scared because we got turned around. You thought I left you. I would never leave you, buddy. Come here, buddy. Give me a hug. I love you. My little boy. All right. Last autograph of the night is Luis Sesa. We have game used hat for him to sign. They're cooking up there. Oh, you're fine. Oh yeah, he, he got to meet him. Yeah, he got to meet him. Were you excited? You're my hero. I've been volunteering, I see him go by. Don't get to talk to him. Oh man. Eric Davis, I talked to him. Oh yeah. That's when I was. How you doing, sir? That's perfect. Thank you so much, sir. Can you grab it, buddy? You want to take it? Say thank you. Bye, buddy. Thank Bye. you so much. How did you like it? Oh, uh, it was the best. We meeted everyone and they signed us our stuff. Who was your favorite? Um, uh, I don't know. Was it Votto? Yeah. Joey Votto was your favorite? Yeah. Yep. He was cool, huh? You know who is also really nice? Lucas Sims, remember meeting him? Yeah. He was so cool. And the last part, I, uh, I accidentally left you. Aw, oh, it's okay. It's alright. We found each other quickly. You're alright. Did you hear that? <laughs> alright, you want to grab some food on the way home? Get ready for day two? Alright, we'll see you guys for day two. Hey everyone, Red's Fest day two. 
Here we go. I'm here with Luke. What's up? Yeah. Matthew was unable to make it today, and uh, Rachel, yesterday it got chaotic, chaotic with the baby, so we decided not today. So, just me and Luke today. Let's do it. All right, going in now. Should be fun. <laughs> if they only oh, they got the music <laughs> off still. They did this yesterday because they let people in early, and the music was off. Hey, everyone. So... We bought some Jersey mystery bags here at Red's Fest. Me and Luke are going to take turns opening for us, so I'll go first. All right. It's a white home jersey. Let's see. 22. Oh, this is an older one because it's got the Morgan patch. Wade Miley. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Awesome. That's awesome. All right. Let me take the camera from you. There you go. And you're yours. All right. Let's see what Luke gets. Let's see what I get. Wade Miley threw a no hitter. I'm pretty sure this year uh, of this jersey. So I'm cool with that. All right. That picture in your office would be pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Leon. Uh, is there a... Am I thinking Pedro Leon or something like that? Not honestly sure offhand. But still, looks sick. Nice. All right. Let's see what else we can get. All right, everyone. So now we're in line for Joel Kunal and Sam LeCure, but we hit the shops. They had massive deals. I want to show some of the things we got. Billy Hamilton cleats for 25 bucks. We got free shirts and some jerseys and stuff. Look at that. Dude, I mean, that's so nice. I got a pair of Billy Hamilton cleats, Amir Garrett, Kurt Casali, Juan Gratterall jersey. I mean, we got tons of stuff and we bought a bunch of locker tags for signings too. So this is going to be awesome. Oh, yeah, he got signed turfs by him. That is sick. All right. This has been fun already. Me again. All right, so, <laughs> oh, boy. In that last clip, uh, you heard me say that we both got Billy Hamilton cleats, and boy, am I dumb. Um, so, no, no, no. Those were not Billy Hamilton cleats. Um, the last pair that he held up that were signed, that was Billy Hamilton. Um, the ones that were white with the Vegas, those were not Billy Hamilton and neither were my pair. Um, I talk about this later in the video where I review all the stuff I got, but, uh, yeah, no, I thought they were Billy Hamilton cause they said BH on the back. Billy Hamilton's not with Under Armour. He was with, uh, Adidas and... I don't think he ever had a signature shoe, so he wouldn't have the BH on the back. I did research, though, and I found out exactly who they were both of. Um, so mine, uh, the maroon ones, are of Brian Goodwin, and his were Arist Aristides Aquino. Um, Aristides Aquino. And uh, towards the jerseys you saw earlier, I believe his was Sandy Leon, and mine was Wade Miley. Um, I am actually going to be trading away the Wade Miley, I believe. So, um, anyways, though, wanted to catch you up on that real quick. See ya. Yes, we got some great deals. How you doing, Mr. Luker? Good, how are you? Doing good. Except my wrist is almost breaking from all the stuff I bought. That's yeah. kind of a problem. I didn't go Black Friday shopping, but I decided to here. <laughs> Thank you very much, brother. How you doing, man? Hey, sir, how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, sick. You know what? I realized we got the exact same thing signed in the exact same way.
You're getting signed. You're getting that signed in the helmet. Got the same locker tag, and I'm getting a baseball for Luke Mail. So we're in line for Luke Mail and Fernando Cruz. How you doing, sir? Good, man. How you doing? doing good. Welcome to Cincinnati. Can this you sign? Yep. Yeah, sweet right. spot or for everybody? Uh, sweet spot, please. Thank you. We're excited to have you here. Good to be here, man. Thanks. Hey, Mr. Cruz. Hey. Nice to meet you, brother. Thank you, man. Cheers. Perfect. Thank you very much. I like your ring, by the way. Thank you, man. Red's Fest meal. Breaded chicken club with chips and coleslaw and water. And Luke got the chicken tenders and fries with Mountain Dew. But uh, as you can see, we are sitting on the floor because the number one problem here, not enough tables and chairs. It's so bad. So, anyways, we're gonna. All right, everyone, me back again. Um, maybe for the final time. I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, during this clip, um, during the previous clip, you see the food that we got, and then in the next clip, you see us going to another signing. Um, but I want to explain what happened in between. So uh, we actually uh or no actually i've got that wrong um i explain what's after um so we got the food we ate um it was all very good and everything but as i mentioned before um i had a panic attack the day before and i don't know what the heck hit me this day um but we got into the next line which was uh Michael Ciani, who actually, if you watch through the rest of the video, at the end, I'm doing a giveaway of the item that he signed, and Aleo Lopez, and uh, after, or during that, when we were in the line, which wasn't a super long line, I started feeling horrible, I mean horrible, like, worse than the panic attack the day before, um, super nauseous, just felt like I was gonna get sick, and like, dude, I felt terrible i felt so weak i didn't feel like i could walk like it was terrible so um and ha you can actually see i struggled to pick up the um locker tag because i was already carrying so much stuff what you can't see on camera and it's the reason a couple of these signings have like such poor camera like control is because i was carrying uh the day before two baseball bats um a like two or three uh a backpack two or three bags in general and then like whatever items i'm getting signed so i have so much in my hands and like i could not could not pick up this locker tag for the life of me until finally i got it which was embarrassing but then actually it was so bad that the next signing for vladimir gutierrez i didn't record anything because I just felt too horrible. I, I didn't even feel like recording it. So there is a signing that happened after that clip um, with Vladimir Gutierrez that uh, I didn't get any footage of, but um, I think I showed in the recap. He signs a, uh, a locker tag for me. And um, what actually happens is after that, we went out to the hallway and we, uh, we stood in the hallway for a little bit, and we got a couple autographs while we were out there. Um, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, I got Tony Santion on one of the locker tags we had bought. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think of what else. There were a couple people that I got autographs of when I was in the hallway. Um, but offhand, oh, Eric Davis is one. I got Eric Davis on a uh, bat um, that I show in the recap again, but, uh, yeah, overall, um, there were some things that, uh, I didn't, uh, record because I felt so, so horrible, so, um, anyways, yeah, uh, obviously, you know, 
24 days later, I feel better, but, uh, or 23, um, but yeah, crazy, so, um, anyways, that about wraps up the video, um, or the amount of times that I should have to interject here, um, so in the remaining clips, you see we get, um, our final autograph is Cam Collier, uh, I think I say his name wrong, um, I can't remember, but he was the Reds' number one overall pick, um, our number one pick in the draft this last year, uh, really nice guy, and I actually gave him, um, one of the business cards, I gave one to Danny Graves and Joey Votto and a couple other players off screen, um, as they were passing by and a couple people that I met there, um, so anyways, yeah, really cool, um, hopefully, you know, they check out the channel, and if so, reach out to me, I would love that, um, so he's the final autograph we get, and then also, um, when we go to uh, record the part where we're talking about the mystery photos, I totally did not realize, but I hand the fo or I hand the phone over to Luke, and this is after recording his part, and he goes to record my part, and I think the video just cut, or he accidentally hit stop or something, but it stopped the recording, so <laughs> you didn't see my part of it or like the closing of it. Um, but then like, I think I talk a little bit after, or maybe it jumps straight to when I'm like recapping everything. But anyways, we had a blast. Um, unfortunately dealt with some health issues during this, unfortunately, but, uh, definitely had a good time. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching this part of the video on to the rest. How you doing today, sir? How you doing? Doing good. This. Yeah, you were lead off right there. Yeah, this is a old, this is a, <laughs> this is a 2019 lineup. All yep. Right, uh, what color you want to get? Um, black, right? Probably black, yeah. I think that's perfect. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, appreciate it. Hey, Mr. Lopez. Uh, this right here. Thank you. Thank you. I like your watch. Thank you, man. Have a good day. Uh, well, that's a, if if I can get that, thank you. Sir, how you doing? Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. How you doing, sir? So again, it's up to you, Cam. Thank you. I also wanted to give you that, if you don't mind. Thank you. Everyone, okay, so we are here at the end of Reds Fest. We got a couple extra autographs there at the end. Um, there are a couple that we didn't take video of, like Eric Davis on my bat and a couple others. But um, we just had something really exciting. So Luke found this deal. Turn, turn the camera around. So Luke found this deal where you get photos, mystery photos, three for 20 bucks. And so... We bought a couple. Luke had already opened his three, or his original three. He bought a couple more. So, first one was Dave Concepcion. Very, very nice. And it's authenticated. Second one. Perfect order. Don Gullet. Very nice. Very nice. But the big one. It's a non-red, though. There we go. The big, big, big dog. Da, 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 Reggie Jackson, Mr. October himself. Freaking incredible. This was an incredible pool. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. So, Luke, go ahead and open your other three that you just bought. Right. Here, let's put the ones you've already opened up against the wall. So, let's see what we get. Yeah, we bought a little too much stuff, so. Little is enough. Right. 
Okay. Let's see. Oh, Ryan Hannigan. Okay. X Reds catcher. Was there something else in there? Um, no, it's just there's a little um, cardboard thing. So oh, it got it. Got it. I'm just going to put this off to the side so we can move them faster. Yeah, no problem. Number two. Let's see what we get. Ooh, who is that one? Oh, Joe, uh, Joe Oliver. Oh, Joe Oliver, nice. He was here today. But wait, what number is he? He's wearing 57 there. He was number nine. That is so crazy. Okay. That might be like a spring training thing or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. It might be rare just in the fact of that. All right. And for the last. Ooh, Fred Norman, another Fred big Norman. red machine pitcher, another World Series winner. Oh yeah. All right, you got some good ones. Now my turn. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about are some pictures that I got signed. Well, that I got signed pictures. Um, you guys saw the clip of Luke opening his pictures, and for whatever reason, the camera just decided not to record my segment of it. So, um, here are the ones that I got, and I've got two others that I'll show in a minute, but I actually have these ones up for sale and trade, and uh, I actually have um, somebody that I'm going to be trading some of this stuff to, and I'll, maybe I'll show what I get back in the trade um, later on, but that's not happening yet. I don't know when we're going to meet up, so um, let's look for a second. All right, so first off, we have Don Gullett. Big Red Machine pitcher. We got a picture of him and then come over here and Don Gullett again. Of course, I had to get two of the same guy, but, um, you know, not a bad one. So I'm actually trading away this one right here that I got at Reds Fest in a mystery thing. Um, and this is Ryan Hannigan. And all of them have COAs from CEI Sports. And then I'm also getting rid of this uh, Mike Miner locker tag, most likely. Um, I don't think I'm going to be keeping it uh, just because. And then Matthew, uh, or no, not Matthew. I got this signed by Sam LeCure, Tom Hume, and uh, I think that's Connor Phillips, um, Red's prospect. And we have to talk about a tragedy that happened. Yeah, this is like a decently rare bobblehead of Jeff Brantley, Red's announcer and ex-player. And I went to open up my bag, and something must have smashed it because both the legs are broken on here. I have to super glue those back on, and the arm entirely came off. So that sucked, and I didn't even get it signed. So I'm still going to fix that. So let's go on to some more items. Okay, so we got some more items here. We'll go from the top here. So this was another one of the mystery photos I got. Gary Nolan, another big red machine pitcher. And Santo Alcala, got him as well. And then we got this Tommy Helms card. There was a guy in line for Tommy Helms who offered this to Matthew. So Matthew got that signed instead of his helmet. And Danny Graves, which at one point during the video, you can see me and Danny Graves talking about this. The second Matthew picked up this card, he started bending it. I've had this card since I was like three or four years old, I think. I don't think I was very old when I got it. Um, I remember getting it out of a pack. It's from 2002. So, actually, I'd be a little older than I thought. I would be six at that point. Five or six. And then, this is something I've had for a little while. Um, this is a Dayton Dragons game-used lineup card where they write down who all is going to be in uh, the game and everything in the lineup order. And I got it signed by Michael Ciani, who is on there. So that was cool. Spencer Steer. This is a, a photograph that I actually took at the ballpark, and I got him to sign it. That was really nice. And this one's kind of hard to see, but uh, this is Luis Sesa. His game you blah, blah 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 game used hat. Um, you can see the eighty five there, and yeah, this is from a military appreciation day. Um, so he signed this for me and was super nice about it. So. Let's go get some more items. 
Okay, had to turn on the light on the camera for a moment for this. So, got two bats signed at Red's Fest, which it was not fun carrying these around. That's why some of the footage sucked. Um, but, Eric Davis, signed bat. Now, I'm not sure if this is game used or not. It's definitely been used. You can see, like, baseball prints on it and stuff. But, I asked Eric Davis about it, and... Let's put it this way. He wasn't in the most wonderful mood um, for whatever reason, but uh, he said it looked a little small to be game used for him, but it actually measures right about the right size. So I'm not sure. Um, I really don't know. And then the funny story was Tom Hume signing his uh, Fungo bat. These are bats that coaches use in practice with players, and Tom Hume was once one of the coaches for the Reds. And I brought this up to him, and you can probably hear it in the video. He's like, I thought I had all of these. He didn't know there was another one in existence that he didn't have in his personal collection. So um, that was pretty pretty awesome to see. He was really nice about everything. So those were the two bats I got signed. Now let's look at some jerseys. Sorry, y'all, I wasn't thinking. Uh, we have one more item. It is this Tommy Helms bobblehead, which you could hear him in the video actually mentioned that he himself does not have one for whatever reason and that he was looking to replace or to get one and i actually offered it to him and i was being serious I, I think it'd be cooler to you know be able to give the story that hey i gave a bobblehead to tommy helms of himself rather than even having the signed bobblehead but he uh he said that's fine he said he wouldn't take it from me and he signed it so that was pretty cool um now we'll look at jersey okay so here we go so first jersey we're gonna look at is actually one that I am very soon getting rid of. Um, this is Wade Miley's jersey. Um, this is a team issued jersey, meaning he most likely never wore it in a game. Um, not always does it mean that, but most of the time, it means that either number one, it was not authenticated to being in a game, or number two, they didn't wear it in a game. So uh, because this one looks to have no wear or no use, I think it's just one that was meant for him to wear and he never did. Um, it's really cool though, because it's also from the season where he got the no hitter. So that's really awesome. Um, but I am actually trading it away and getting some uh, really good items in return. So happy about that. Um, really nice jersey though. Kind of sad to let it go, but I don't think it's a realistic chance that I get it signed, and that happens to be one of my pet peeves is having something that would be perfect to get signed and not being able to. Um, next is David Bell. So this is not a real jersey, let me tell you that first. This is actually a small little Reds jersey. It's like a cut-off sleeves jersey. Um, I have it all folded up here. I'm not going to unfold it, but it's a cut-off sleeves jersey that is like generic. It's just something you can go and buy very cheap and stuff. And we had a company um, that my wife uses for like custom t-shirts and stuff do the uh, lettering and the numbering for David Bell because it already had a number 25 on the front. So since he was the manager and 25 uh, uniform number, so I decided to put it on there. And uh, you can see the autograph right there. Got that in person. So that was really cool. Uh, finally, for this group, we have Chris Heisey, who played for the Reds back in the early 2010s, and um, he did really well with the Reds uh, for at least a year or two there, um, and he was super nice to meet at Reds Fest, and he actually even commented that this is only the second jersey he had signed there. Um, I don't know if he meant that of all. I really doubt it, but second jersey uh, he signed there, so his autograph there. And yeah, he was really awesome about it. So let's look at the next group, though. Okay, let's start with this group of jerseys. And we're going to start with one of the coolest experiences there, Lucas Sims. So Lucas Sims is a reliever uh, for the Reds right now. And man, you talk about a very kind, amazing person. He was just walking through signing autographs for pretty much anybody that asked. I mean, he was so incredible. And this is actually a game-used jersey of him. Um, so that was amazing to get him um and he was so nice about it and uh just just an incredible human being if you have never met lucas sims and you get the opportunity to expect a very kind person who's going to be you know wonderful to you um yeah this is one of my favorites of reds fest definitely another one though 
is Danny Graves. I love Danny Graves. I may be the number one fan of Danny Graves of all time. Um, it stems back to my childhood, knowing that he was the greatest closer the Reds have ever had. Um, I mean, he was on one of the worst Reds teams of all time and still is the saves leader for career saves for the Cincinnati Reds. Um, so, I mean, he was incredible. This is actually a USA Baseball jersey, and these are extremely rare. He even thought it might be the authentic one, which I should have asked more questions because I actually don't know. Um, so really awesome to get that. And then this is actually something I picked up from the Reds Fest booth, uh, Reds Authentics booth at Reds Fest for only 10 bucks. Uh, Juan Gratterall, um, spring training jersey from 2018. I mean, this thing is awesome, and it was only 10 bucks. That was it. They had some really good deals if you looked in the right places at Reds Fest. So let's go on to the last group of jerseys, and then I got some baseballs and uh, cleats to look at. All right, everyone. The best item we got. This is a Joey Votto all-star jersey that I've had for a couple years in hopes to ever get to meet him again. I met him one time down at the ballpark. He signed a helmet for me, which I... Uh, unfortunately made the decision to let go of which i regret now but um i mean this jersey is beautiful he was so so kind i mean he was making like uh custom handshakes with people like little kids uh secret handshakes what i should say um he was taking pictures like even polaroid pictures with some of the kids and stuff i mean incredible human being you can see the signature there. This was Matthew's first time getting to meet him. I really did not want to overshadow Matthew meeting him, but Matthew was only really excited for Joey Votto. I mean, he was, once he heard we were meeting Joey Votto, he was like, I know that name. Cool. You know, like he, he was a little more excited for that one. Um, so yeah, this is definitely going up on my walls. I do my own framing, by the way. Um, let me show a couple pieces here um i gotta turn the light off because otherwise ken griffey jr joe nuxall tribute jersey and i've got pictures of the ones they wore this is his actual worn one um this is the one that he wore on the field at that time got the hall of fame sticker a plaque that reads all about his career especially with the Cincinnati Reds it shows there. And then uh, cards lining the bottom. Um, Cameron Jordan jersey. I'm a Saints fan as well. Authenticated, and I've never seen a jersey with design like that. That is incredible. Um, Chuck Harmon. I met him when he was quite, quite older. He was the first ever African-American player for the Cincinnati Reds. Um... And he actually was, you know, kind of confused. And he actually wrote Chuck Charman. So I'm pretty sure I have a one-of-one -one autograph. That's pretty awesome. Um, let's see. Philip Irvin, another guy that is one of my favorites. This is his Game Muse jersey from the time he got his first stolen base. So I got him to sign it, and I got first SB put on it. So and I got a nice card in there with it. Delvin Bro, uh, Saints player, one of my favorites uh, during his playing time, though he didn't play for too long. His story is amazing. He had broken his neck in college, was told he'd never play again, and boom, made it to the NFL. Uh, Joey Votto, two signed and game-used Joey Votto batting gloves with his rookie card in the middle, and I actually have pictures of instances of him wearing the same gloves. Um, the one on the right is actually from his rookie season. You can even tell it by his autograph being a little bit different. And then Willie Rofe jersey, Saints Hall of Famer. Um, absolutely love it. Beautiful. So I cannot wait to get Joey Votto in a case as well. Oh, and let me show another beautiful piece. I got this out of one of those Reds Fest bags um, a couple years ago. It is a game-used Eugenio Suarez jersey signed by him and got some pictures in there with him. And uh, I'm wanting to get either a locker tag or a nameplate just like I did for Ken Griffey Jr. on this one too. 
So that's my frame jerseys, and I cannot wait to add Votto into that. Okay, and then I only got three baseballs signed, but I like the ones I got. Um, in full disclosure, please don't do what I did because it is kind of a collecting mistake. Um, you are supposed to get official MLB baseballs that are completely clean and everything. These are actually practice used baseballs except the one in the middle. This is like a cheap retail ball. Um, never get autographs on these. I got Chris Welsh on this. I regret it afterwards because this is probably just going to fade and bleed and it's already partially and it's not even been a month. So bad idea, but um, still, you know, cool autograph. I'll keep it for as long as I can. This is Cam Collier, I believe is how you say his name, or Collier. Um, he is the Reds' first draft pick of this year, um, or was the last first draft pick of last year. Um, and, I mean, really cool guy, seemed super nice. Another one that I gave um, a uh, Wonderbeard Ministries business card to. And then Luke Mail, the new catcher for the Reds, uh, backup catcher, um, got him on a baseball. So that was really cool. Um, so got the three of those. Let's go to the next item. Okay, so let's talk about my mistake. Um, so I did buy four pairs of cleats, and we're going to look at each one of those. But we're going to start with this pair, which in the video, um, you can see Luke bought a pair that were like these, and I bought a pair like these. And they say BH on the back. Now, I was pretty hungry, had not really uh, done any research or anything, and bought these thinking, oh my goodness, that BH has to be Billy Hamilton. They are Bryce Harper's series of cleat. And not at all Billy Hamilton, because he's not with Under Armour. He is with Adidas. So, these are not Billy Hamilton. But instead, I found out who they were by doing some research. These are actually Brian Goodwins. They, he was on the Reds um, uh, 2020 or 2021, I forget. Um, didn't stay with us too long. I photo matched him. Um, I may throw a photo of the, uh, of the cleats on him right here. Yep. So these are the same cleats, um, not game used. They're probably just an extra pair. He had size matches, everything matches. So that's what those are. These are game used of Kurt Casale, number 12. So they are definitely game used because you can even see the dirt trapped in there. Um, they are beautiful. I absolutely love them and going to keep those to hopefully get them signed by him one day. These I'm trading away. Um, these are number 50, Amir Garrett. Amir Garrett is with Adidas. Um, he wears shoes just like this. He wears cleats just like this. And I'm actually trading these ones for another pair of his exact cleats adidas as well and signed by him and were game used as well that's part of that trade deal for the wade miley jersey that i'm doing so these one won't be in the collection very much longer but i'll be replacing them with another and finally these bad boys tucker barnhart game used 2018 authenticated everything they are beautiful they're turf shoes so very specific cleats gorgeous gorgeous signed on both shoes one of my favorite things i definitely picked up i wish i could have bought more but i stopped so that is the cleats my locker tag collection now um these are all signed aleo lopez joel kunal vladimir gutierrez fernando cruz tony santion i think all of those look so beautiful and i've put them in a weird location so this is obviously the vents and I think that looks cool because you're coming down my basement stairs and you immediately see that so that is really nice um, all of these cost me only five dollars each so there's a total of twenty five dollars in this every one of them is signed and look beautiful I am very happy with that purchase okay so final items from uh, Reds Fest that I got um, I only paid for one of these, and then the rest were actually free. They were literally just throwing these things at you. So, number one is a Sunny Gray bobblehead. 
I did not pay for this. They gave this out free towards the end of Saturday Reds Fest. Um, they were just handing them out by the dozens. So I ended up grabbing one. Um, Sonny Gray was one of my favorite players with the Reds. I still love him. Hope he's doing well in Minnesota or wherever he ends up now. This jersey I bought, but I think I bought it for five bucks. Um, it's really cool. It's an old pinstripe jersey. I actually kind of have a plan for this. Um, I am a massive fan of a player that I've never even seen alive, uh, Johnny Vandermeer. Definitely a big fan. Um, I've got some autographs of him. I've got, in fact, I'll show this really quickly. This is insanely cool. It is a signed picture of Johnny Vandermeer pitching, and it is from the second game of his no-hitter streak. If you don't know, Johnny Vandermeer was the only player in history to throw two no-hitters back-to-back only four days apart. 9-11-38, 9-15-38. And he signed it Johnny Vandermeer, and it has authentication with it. So one of the coolest parts of my collection. I absolutely love it. Um, that's my office back there. Don't worry about that. Um, anyways... So we have this free t-shirt from Red Legs Run. It's almost like a jersey material. It's really nice. Um, they were giving these out. That was free. They had a kid's version, which I grabbed for Matthew. So that was cool. And then they had some other shirts um, that they were giving out for free. I think this is Red Legs Run as well. Yes. Um, I grabbed two of those. Didn't even mean to. And I got another one for Matthew. Um, little kid version. So that was all the stuff from Red's Fest. So let's uh, close this up. All right, so that's everything. Um, I didn't show Matthew's helmet that he got signed, but he already put it up in his room, and I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be trading some of the stuff away. Sorry, video cut out for a second, um, so I had to cut that clip a little bit. But let me go back over what I was mentioning. Um, so I am going to do a giveaway. Uh, nothing crazy. It's going to be a small item, but... We have the mini helmet of Connor Phillips, Tom Hume, and Sam LeCure that I will be giving away. Uh, all you have to do to be entered is comment down below and put the word helmet. You put the word helmet, you'll be entered. I'm going to pick somebody on January 15th. I'm going to set an alarm right after this to uh, pick somebody for the winner. And I will send it to you or drop it off to you if you're close enough. Um, and yeah, I mean, free little mini helmet with uh, three pretty cool signatures on it so um if you'd like to be entered for that just comment down below helmet and i also wanted to mention one other thing while we uh while i'm closing this up i know that i'm a religious youtube channel i know that uh wonderbeard ministries is for the spreading of the gospel and i'm going to do that in every video um but i also make videos that are for family vlogs um and just to kind of show the more personal side of things, you know, so that people don't think you're just some kind of robot and that you have nothing else going on, though my main thing is ministry. Um, but I'm also a massive sports fan. I am also a collector of sports memorabilia. So, um, yeah, it's, it's fun to show this stuff off. It's fun to connect with people on another level and see, you know, how people respond to this kind of thing. So, yeah, I do the videos because of that. Um, but like I said, share the gospel. Um, I even shared, uh, you know, by giving my YouTube channel name and everything to a couple players at Reds Fest and a couple people in general. So, you know, and not all of that did I get on camera. Unfortunately, there was a couple I didn't. Um, but yeah, so it was a fun time. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, like, share, subscribe, all of that stuff. Um, and last thing, we crossed 50 subs. Um, I know it's not a lot, but it has taken a while to even get to this point because I was so inconsistent with videos for a long time. And we've had pretty steady growth. So I thank you all for that. I thank you for um, you know checking out the videos and stuff. It means a lot to me. It really does. So if you don't know how to subscribe, just in case, uh, there's actually a button down in the description or down underneath the video next to my channel name that says subscribe. All you have to do is click on that. Once you do that, you'll get my videos regularly coming to you. 
Um, and so it, it's really nice. It's very convenient. So if you want to do that, it helps out a lot. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to close up here. God bless you all. Have a good one. See you next time. You know what? I feel like being generous. I'm actually going to add on one other giveaway. So if you comment the word helmet, you're going to be entered for the mini helmet. But if you also comment, and I'm fine with you commenting both, if you also comment the word dragons, I'll go ahead and give away this lineup card too. Um, this thing is pretty big. It's bigger than 8x10. So it's got some pretty notable Reds prospect names on it. Um, one, the main one, is that 39. That is Alexis Diaz, now one of the better relievers for the Reds. Um, so, signed by Michael Ciani from May 21st, 2019. If you'd like to be entered for this, just enter the word Dragons. I'll be also picking that name on January 15th. God bless you. Have a good one.